Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and one of my favourite people ever. John Owen Jones has just been announced as the brand new star of the Broadway cast in Les Miserables, currently starring as Phantom in the West End. It's not bad being you, is it? Um, I can't complain, really. I've, I've had a very good run of luck, um, you know, combined with hard work. So I'm very pleased that I'm getting the chance to go to Broadway again. Nonsense. There's no such thing as luck. When you hear your voice, it's very clear why you get the biggest roles in the world. Um, it is still astonishing. They could have anybody on Broadway and they chose you. That's got to be humbling, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, um, it was a complete shock. You know, um, um, the, the production um, is the same one that I started back in 2010 for the 25th anniversary of the show. Cameron decided it would be a good idea, Cameron McIntosh, that is, to reboot the show and create a brand new version of it. And he chose me to do um, Valjean. So I got a very great opportunity to recreate the role and, and bring something new to the show. And that version is now running on Broadway. Um, and I think um, they wanted me to go back there because they wanted me to close the show, um, to kind of complete the circle, as it were. Because the show's been running there for a year now with Ramin Karimlu as Jean Valjean first, and then um, Alfie Bow, who's just doing it at the moment, and I'll be taking over from Alfie. But what's very satisfying to me, and I've said this to other people, is that Ramin and Alfie have had to do pretty much what I invented back in 2010. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. You know? That's fantastic. And going to Broadway, there's nothing like it. I just saw this show a month ago, and actually I think it's probably more immersive and compelling than the original. It's beautifully staged. Is there an added pressure and excitement doing Broadway? There shouldn't be, but there's something so special about it. Yes, yeah, sister. You know what's really interesting is that when you work on Broadway, you hear people's stories of how they got there and how hard it is um, for people in the industry to get on Broadway. It is the holy grail of musical theatre. And, you know, to start off from a small town in Wales um, and, you know, move to the West End and then, you know, go to Broadway is, you know, it's brilliant for me to be able to do that. Um, but I've had to, um, just as long a journey as everyone else, even people in the ensemble and understudies. They've all had to work so hard to get there because the standard is so high. Um, but when you get there, it's just a big family. Everyone gets on with everyone. It is very much a job still at the end of the day where people come in and they do their job and then they go home. But there's a real sense of community in New York and the theatrical community is very bonded, you know, so it's very exciting mm -hmm. to be part of that. I think it's more intimate, isn't it? It literally is within just a couple of streets and you're more or less on top of each other next door. They do seem to also have, dare I say, a more professional ethic sometimes. They don't take holidays. They seem to work much harder. I think it's possibly because the bar is so high because they're competing with 350 million other people. Oh, right. Definitely. I mean, it is very, very competitive. That's the thing, you know. So, you know, to be selected to be part of that group is is really an honour for me. Um, but as you talked about, you know, the family, it is very close. All the theatres are very close-knit there. Um, I mean, it's kind of the same in the West End, really, but, I mean, there's a uniqueness about New York, un unique New York, there we are, there's a vocal warm-up for you, um, <laughs> where the, when I was at the, um, uh, the Broadhurst Theatre, when I did Les Mis back in 1997 over there for a brief stint, um, next door was the Majestic Theatre, which is where Phantom was running, and there were two of the theatres back to back, so all these four theatres were interconnected. And I remember once where, um, you know, we were on stage doing the show, and we were able to open the door and walk onto the stage of the next theatre where they were doing the chorus line. <laughs> so, you know, so, um, so you could actually, if you were not on stage, you could watch the next door show from the wings. And also, what we would do is, like, you know, the company would get together before each show and do a physical and vocal warm up. And sometimes we would go into the chorus line theatre and they'd all be there in their leg warmers, we'd be there in our rags and we'd be doing a little dance warm up together and then they would all join us in our physical warm up. It was very funny actually, but uh, uh, but you don't get that in London because the theatres aren't all hemmed in on each other, you know. So of course you're excited to go to Broadway, but then again you're a married man with children, that can't be easy. Well, no, it's, uh, look, it's, it's a funny old business, that kind of thing. I work in the evenings, my kids are at school and my wife's a school teacher. So I see them for about 30 to 45 minutes a day, you know, where I get up after they've gone and then I see them when they come over from school, then I go to work and then they've all gone to bed when I get home. Mm. But we've managed, you know, when they asked me to do Broadway, it was very important to me. My family were able to come with me. So, you know, we've talked to the schools and we've worked it out with uh, my wife's job that they can all take some time off and come with me. Because if they weren't able to, I probably wouldn't have gone, wow. I'll be honest. So, you know, because it means that much to me. So 
because it would have been six months on my own, you know. Yeah. That kind of thing, it's, it's never healthy for any kind of relationship, let alone. But what you know, a thrill that you can all do it together. That's so exciting for them. How old are the kids very now? exciting, yeah. Uh, my kids are 12 and 13, and they came with me when we went before, and they were only like three and four then. So it wasn't a problem, really. Um, but... Um, but this time they were very, very excited and they just all told their friends and they were all tears and everything. But it's all going to be a lot of fun, you know, because what an amazing experience for them at that age to go and live in another country and, you know, to live in such a vibrant yeah. melting pot like New York, you know, where there's so many things to experience and do. What's it like for your kids having John Owen Jones as daddy? Is it just dad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I, you know, they, they have their friends... Um, think that I'm famous or I'm not really you know I'm not a household name or anything and you know I'm not really bothered by that but um, they kind of they kind of tease me about it sometimes and they say oh god that you were on TV the other night with Bryn Terreville oh so embarrassing why can't you go on the X Factor or something I'm like that's not my cup of tea kid sorry <laughs> you know <laughs> so I know that you need to I think you're doing fine as you are <laughs> yeah I look at you and your career and listen to your voice and it's unsurprising that you've been offered this. It is remarkable. I know we've talked about this before. What pressure are you under to sound like John Owen Jones day in and day out? Do you worry about it or do you just say que sera? Um, it's a bit of both, really. I mean, if you really got stressed about it, you wouldn't have a voice. Stress is one of the biggest enemies of the singer. So you have to really believe that you need to belong there because if you... You know, you looked around and thought, oh, uh, uh, people are going to catch me out. I shouldn't really be here. And then you worried and worried about it. it. The first thing that would go would be your voice. You'd get a sore throat, you'd get tightness, and it would be really difficult to perform. So you have to really relax and just believe in yourself. Otherwise, it doesn't work. But on the flip side, of course, the nerves help as well. So, you know, you, you end up pushing yourself to be the very best you can because you know people have paid money to come and see you. I mean, I've got to that level now. <clears throat> excuse me, where people travel from Japan and Russia to come and see me perform, you know, and there was a point in my career where I was just a phantom, but now I'm John Owen Jones playing the phantom, or John Owen Jones playing Barjon, and um, it's it's a privilege, you know, and I don't want to let those people down, so I give 100% every single performance, even when, say for example, yesterday, it was a Thursday matinee, um, in Phantom and it wasn't full because of what happened in Paris ticket sales have dropped a little bit they'll pick up again they always do um, and you know the audience were very quiet and there's a tendency for actors to just relax and not give the best performance but I knew that there were people out there who travelled from Italy to come and see me mm. so I lifted my performance you know to make sure that it was worthwhile for them you know even though I don't know them there's just kind of a weird guilt and a, a humanity and a connection with these people that you feel even though you don't know them and you feel like you owe them something so in my case I give 100% every time I come we're going to get back to that in a second something you said there was really interesting has there been a palpable change in the theatre since Paris have people become more nervous is there a different feel um, yes but you know what this, is all, this has all happened before you know the IRA were you know theatres were closing down and shows were closing because the IRA back in the 70s and 80s and uh, then we had 9-11 um, happen and um, you know, people were not coming to London, um, but they were still going to massive outdoor festivals, which are just as risky. You know, there's, there's no one target. I mean, uh, when Paris happened on Friday night and the Saturday matinee, um, it was sold out, but there were big pockets of empty seats where people had elected not to come. Wow. So, you know, and these are the same people that are going on holiday to Disneyland Paris for the weekend. Right. So, and a very good friend of mine from my hometown, Barry Port in Wales, um, him and his wife were going to come up in the Christmas period to come and see Phantom and to see me and do some Christmas shopping. But because of what happened in Paris, they're not coming now. And now, that, so instead they're going to Amsterdam, which is like that's <laughs> isn't it? Like yeah, but that's not, it's not London. You, can, you can't guess. I mean, they just picked oh, that's ridiculous. In Paris, you just can't guess. So yeah. there's no point worrying about it. You know, I went to Paris the weekend after Charlie Hebdo happened earlier this year. And um, I went to New York after, a week after 9-11. So, you know, it, it doesn't bother me at all. If you're going to go, you're going to go. So you might as well go doing something you enjoy, yeah. like watching something in the theatre, you know? 
Exactly. Let's talk about the two shows. I mean, with the greatest respect, I've watched you in Phantom 400 times and I like it, but it doesn't <laughs> compare to Jean Valjean, does it? I mean, the two roles, one is a sort of 10% come on and steal the show. The other is you have to work hard for two and a half hours nonstop. Well, yeah, it is. There is a lot of that. You know, Phantom, when you're um, at full strength, it's considerably easier than Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean is a mountain to climb every night. But yet you get stamina built up and you get into the role. And, you know, I still give as much to Jean Valjean, even though it's a bigger part, as I give to the Phantom, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's peculiar because it's, <laughs> it's so different, but they're so challenging in, a, in an equal way. You know, because yeah. um, my voice has dropped about an octave now to to sing the phantom properly. Um, so when I go into Les Mis, um, I'll have to train the top of my voice up again just to kind of get into singing the role easier. And you know, I've done phantom thousands of times, and yet I came back to the show recently and I did four shows and my voice went because I, I wasn't quite used to it. Wow. I had a few days off and then I was back and. And I'm full strength, and it's it's great. And the same will possibly happen with Les Mis. I don't know, but I've just got to be prepared mentally and vocally to do it. Because even though, that, as you said, they are a world apart, they're both equally challenging in their own ways. And I guess the physical side of Jean Valjean is also interesting because he's a young man who runs in and runs out and then becomes an old man that eventually pegs it. Um, yeah. You've got to be physically fit as well as vocally fit, haven't you? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of I mean, there's a lot of things made of, in the show about the, the character's strength. So, and you know, I try and achieve that not by looking, you know, buff and having a washboard stomach or anything, because they wouldn't have looked like that in those days, really, would they? They didn't have um, training regimes and weight machines. And no, they hadn't got protein so, shakes, have they? <laughs> no, they didn't. No. no. Um, so um, I, you know, the, the strength of the character for me, I believe, comes from within. So it's a stillness and kind of a wisdom as he gets older. Yeah. And I try and play that. And one of the most, um, one of my favorite compliments that I get when I play Valjean is how well he ages when I play him, you know? And I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that, that side of the story because it's not convincing to the audience otherwise. They don't go on that journey if they don't believe you're an old man at the end yeah. who's lived a life, you know? I so think- You've done a whole life in like three hours. You know? Yeah. I think it is still the most beautiful show on earth. Lem is, is moving and the Broadway production is certainly incredible. The way it opens, the way it finishes and the way you perform that role is staggering and you are a remarkable performer. John, I always love well, talking thank, to you. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Congratulations on getting the role. You'll be appearing from March in Les Miserables at the Imperial Theatre on Broadway in Les Miserables and you continue to perform as the Phantom of the Opera in the West End uh, for the next couple of months. Great to talk to you and I hope to see you on Broadway. Okay, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers.